Before we start, we just want to say thank you. We are humbled that anyone would choose to give us their time and watch this project that we're working on. Unfortunately, with that said, this is not the video we wanted to make. In our intro video, I said we were going to document our mistakes along the way. And in saying that, I didn't think that this project was going to be such a problem and that so many mistakes were going to be made. This project will not be completed in this video. I can tell you that for sure. Part of me wanted to try to edit these mistakes out. Who wants their first project posted for everyone to see to be one that failed? Like my wife said to me, this is not the video we wanted to make, but it is the video that is. With that out the way, let's get into the good, the bad, and certainly the ugly. We picked up this piece of spalted maple from a local dealer, waited about a week to let the wood acclimate to our shop, and then started to get work on cleaning out the bark and getting rid of any soft wood or rotted wood. Spotted maple is created by allowing maple to decay before starting the drying process. During this decay process, a fungus attacks the wood, creating black lines throughout the wood. I have never used this type of wood before, which is going to create a problem as you'll see. I should have done way more research into this type of wood before getting started on this piece. And that's a lesson I will carry over to the next project, hopefully. Once I thought I was done clearing out all the soft wood, I went ahead and cut down the slab to size using my track saw and my old jigsaw. Once I had the slab cut to rough dimensions, I went ahead and set up my flattening jig using my router to flatten both sides of the slab to get it ready for epoxy. After I felt like I had taken off enough material, I went ahead and did a very shallow pass to try to clean up any burn marks left by the router bit. You can see that the router bit still left some burning after the shallow pass, but at this time I wasn't too worried about it as Sandy will take care of that on a later step. Next I used my drill and some brush attachments to try to remove any bark that I missed previously. This will ensure the epoxy has a good bond to the wood. We applied a coat of shellac to try and prevent staining from the dye we used in the epoxy. This is one of the many mistakes that we made. I really should have used a penetrating epoxy to seal the maple. The shellac exposed more of the softwood that we had to go ahead and clean up before we could pour the epoxy. Once we felt we were ready to pour the epoxy, we started to make the molds. We pre-drilled the holes for the screws, applied caulking, and made sure everything was watertight to avoid any leaks. We made the molds oversized so this would be easier in the future to remove. We used about 6 gallons of liquid glass deep pour epoxy for this table. We added black dye and mixed according to the instructions, then proceeded to pour the epoxy hoping that we didn't leave any voids in this mold. And I'm happy to report there was no leaks, the mold was the best part of this build. We brushed the epoxy on the edges of the wood, trying to eliminate any air bubbles. Originally, what you see now was going to be the top, but plans changed and this will and is still causing us issues in finishing this piece, as you'll see later in the video. So this is the time we started to notice the fact that Spaltic Maple is very porous in areas. We could clearly see those areas absorbing a higher amount of epoxy, which would again cause us problems later. Later in that day, we also noticed another problem. The epoxy was getting too hot, which can cause it to cure too fast, resulting in cracks in the epoxy. The temperatures at one point got up to 150. When pouring more than two inches of epoxy, you should be using fans to help cool it. I know this, but for some reason, I just didn't do it. I don't know why, maybe I forgot, maybe I just felt it wasn't hot enough, it was in the mid 70s at the time. So we quickly grabbed our fans and that quickly helped to lower the temperature and to avoid any cracks in the epoxy. After that crisis was avoided, we waited about a week to demold the slab. The oversized mold covered in sheathing tape made it really easy to remove the epoxy from the mold. Then I set back up the flattening jig to level out the slab with the epoxy. This is where we noticed that not sealing the maple properly was a huge mistake. You'll see a lot of staining on the wood from this point on from the black dye. 
which in hindsight, I really wish I would have just continued to try to remove more material to try to get more of that staining off. But I thought I could fix it later, which uh, doesn't go so well. When cutting down the table to the final dimensions, I ran into another problem. My saw stopped working. But I reached out to Craig Customer Service and ordered a new trigger for my saw. And a few days later, I was back up and running. I made some templates on my CNC, marked it with a Sharpie, and cut the lines with my track saw. Unfortunately, I forgot to hit record and uh, we don't have that footage. Next, we did some more sanding on the edges and on the top. Uh, we went ahead and took out our router to go ahead and add some profiles to the top and bottom of the table. Then we went back to sanding as we were working our way up to 180 grit while water popping between grits. During sanding, we exposed more air bubbles in the epoxy. So we went back with black CA glue to fill in those voids and then back to sanding. So I went back and forth on how to deal with the areas that had softwood. Uh, after watching YouTube videos and Googling a bunch, we decided on using thin CA glue to act as a wood stabilizer. We went ahead and applied the CA glue to the softwood areas and then I went ahead and applied the CA glue to the rest of the slab as well. We went ahead and sanded off the excess. This worked great as a fix mostly, but again the fact that we didn't use penetrating epoxy to begin with comes back to haunt us. We went ahead and figured out the location that we wanted the legs, drilled some holes using a portable drill guide, and inserted some threaded inserts. A quick wipe of some mineral spirits to clean up any dust from interfering with the finish. The finish that we are using is Rubio Monaco. We're using the color charcoal to try to, let's say, blend in those stains from the epoxy. So we mixed it up, spread it on, let it sit for about five minutes, wiped it off, and then let it dry for about 24 hours before realizing we have some problems. So here we are noticing that I missed a lot of air bubbles and we had some imperfections on the surface. I won't lie, this is a little bit of a stressful time as I spent a lot of hours trying to make sure we didn't have any air bubbles, but uh, there they were. So we went ahead and decided we needed to refinish the slab and fix the issues. This required us to sand down the slab and try to work to expose the air bubbles with this little triangular knife chisel and then refill them with epoxy the amount of air bubbles we had has a lot to do with our decision to use the bottom as the top uh, when we were pouring the epoxy. Once the epoxy was cured, we went back to work using a car scraper to flatten the epoxy and then using the sander to smooth them all out. Then I repeated the sanding process from before. I took a lot of time trying to make sure I got the most even sanding pattern in the epoxy. Black epoxy is not the most fun to work with and you will always see some scratches. Then we went through the process of refinishing the table, but unfortunately, it still did not look good. Uh, probably was worse. I sanded through the CA glue I used before to stabilize the softwood. Uh, we ran into a lot of these errors due to the fact that we were trying to, try to rush the process at the end just to meet the deadline of this video, which we imposed on ourselves. Now this brings us to where we are right now. We have a coffee table that we finished for a second time that we hate for a second time. And there's no way that this is gonna be leaving our shop. So what do we do next? Well, we've been thinking about this for the last few days. Um, and this time we're thinking, you know, we're gonna take the time not to rush, not to push this project out faster than we should. We took the time to actually do the research that we should have done at the start of the project. We're gonna use our flattening jig to remove as much material as possible to try to get rid of that epoxy staining so that we can go ahead and start new. Well, not new, but better off than we are right now. This leads us to the end of this video. We were hoping to get this project done in one video, but unfortunately, due to all the issues we were having, we're gonna to have to push it out into two. So thank you for making it this far with us. Uh, we plan to release full project videos on the first and third Wednesday of each month, God willing. We will be posting updates on this piece, as well as all the other things that we're working on right now on our Facebook and Instagram. So follow us there if you want to continue this journey with us. Have a great day. The choice is yours.